The goal of this video is to teach you how to set up an outline. Um, this particular outline is going to include claims and evidence because this outline is designed for a persuasive or opinion piece of writing. Now I've chosen this idea of Lego bricks. Um, because whenever I'm building an outline, I always think of it like you're choosing the Legos you want to use for your build. If you're a Lego builder, you'll know you often think about what you want to build and you pull out the bricks you need ahead of time. So if you're building a castle, you might pull out gray to build the stone walls. And if you're building um, a forest, you might need lots of brown and green. So you start by thinking about the pieces that you need. It's the same thing for an essay. You're going to go through your articles and you're looking for the evidence that you need. They're like the pieces you're going to use to build your essay. In my last video, I showed you how to set up a pro-con chart um, to consider both positions that you could write about and to look for big ideas. So as you read the articles, you were thinking big ideas, not small pieces of evidence, but big ideas about why you might be for or against something. We used the example of serving chocolate milk at school every day and thought of reasons why you might say, yes, we should serve chocolate milk every day or why we should not. And then the end result was that we should have ended up with a position statement. I decided to use the position statement, schools should not serve chocolate milk every day um, because kids drink too much, it has a lot of sugar, and it can cause diseases. So now that I have that, now that I know which side of the issue I'm going to be on and the reasons why I think it, I'm ready to start building my outline. So in order to build your outline, I like to start with a brand new piece of paper. You can do this in a notebook or you can just grab a piece of lined paper, but I'm ready to start building my outline. And I have these three steps that I follow. First, I'm going to write my position statement at the top of the page. This is crucial. This is like the foundation of my essay. I don't want to forget what it is I'm trying to prove. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There we go. I've just rewritten the position statement that I set up using my pro-con chart. It says, let me get my highlighter, there we go, and I'm going to color it purple. It says, school should not serve chocolate milk every day because kids drink it too much, it has too much sugar, and because it can cause diseases. So there's my position statement. The next thing I'm going to put on my outline is I want to split my page up into three parts so I've got a spot for each claim. Now some people like to go one claim at a time and find their evidence and then write their next claim. That's totally fine too, but sometimes if you do it that way you'll forget and not do all three claims. So for starters, we're going to practice putting all three claims on the page and so that would look like this. There we go. So I have claim one, kids drink it too much, and you should notice that's the same exact claim that was up here in my position statement. My second claim is, it has too much sugar, and here that claim is from my position statement. And my third claim is, it can cause diseases, and that's just this claim right here from my position statement. So my position statement at the top tells people if I'm for or against something and reminds me of the three claims. And then I write all three claims on my outline so that I've got space underneath them in which to add my evidence. So that's step two, write your claims on each part of your outline page. Once I do that, I am ready to start planning my evidence. That's gonna be here in yellow. To do that, I'm going to go back into my sources and I'm looking for facts that help prove each of my claims. So for example, my first claim here is kids drink too much chocolate milk. That's one of the reasons I don't think schools should serve it every single day. Kids just drink too much of it. It's delicious and they can't control themselves. So I need to go back into my sources and look for evidence. I can't just claim that kids are drinking too much chocolate milk. I have to prove it with evidence for my sources. So I did. I went back into the articles and I found this. One of my articles said some kids drink 10 to 15 cartons of chocolate milk a day. So I'm going to highlight that yellow because it's evidence from the text. 
And I also want to point out I wrote S1 at the end. That's because back in my TARP, um, I wrote source one and then I wrote the name of the article that this evidence came from. So any evidence I pull from this article, I can call, I can write S1 after to remind me where I got it from. So when I draft my essay, I can put what source it came from. So I thought about that. Some kids drink 10 to 15 cartons of chocolate milk a day. That's a great piece of evidence. That's way too much chocolate milk. And then I went searching again for more evidence of this idea that kids are drinking a ton of chocolate milk. And then I found this. It was a quote from a lunch server at a school. She said, it's pretty much only with breakfast cereal that any kid would choose white milk, Mrs. Rally, a lunch server said. So I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, that's a lot of chocolate milk. Kids aren't like sometimes choosing it. They're not being like, oh, I could really use a treat today. I'm gonna choose it today, but tomorrow I'll drink plain milk. They pick it every single day. The only time they get white milk is if they're gonna pour it over their sugar cereal. That's too much chocolate milk. So I added that to my evidence because I feel like it supports the idea that kids are drinking it too much. This one came from a different source. This was the second source listed on my tarp. And so I put S2. Now, I know that I need three pieces of evidence for each claim. In fact, I'm going to write that here on my notes page so I don't forget. Three evidence per claim. Sorry for my messy handwriting. And so I know I need to go back into the text and search for one more piece of evidence. So that's what I did. I went back into my sources and I found this. This again was Mrs. Rowley, so it's the same source as my last evidence. But another quote from her was, we serve six or seven cartons of chocolate for every one of white milk at lunch. This evidence again supports the idea that kids are drinking chocolate milk every chance they get. They're not choosing to have it sometimes. So when I go in and I do my drafting, I'll be able to explain how those support my evidence. So this is the start to my outline. By looking at this, you should be able to, excuse me, you should be able to see that I have my claim right here, here, and here. I put my position statement at the top so I don't forget it, and it's there when I'm ready to draft. And then I'm collecting three pieces of evidence for each claim. So claim one, I'm done. I have three good pieces of evidence. Next, I would look at claim two. It has too much sugar and I would go back into my sources and be searching for evidence that chocolate milk has a lot of sugar. And then my third one is I said it can cause diseases. So again, back into my sources, I'm looking for evidence. I remember them saying something about heart disease and obesity um, and diabetes, so I'm like, okay, I kind of remember that. I'm gonna go back into the sources and find the exact evidence and write it down. I'm also going to make sure and include what source it came from so when I'm drafting I can put that in my draft. So this outline is not done yet. The first part, I'm going to draw a reddish line, everything above the red line is done. That's what those sections should look like. Everything below the red line is not done yet. For this spot I need three more pieces of evidence for claim two and three more evidence pieces for claim three. So now it's your turn. If you're writing the same position statement as me, you're welcome to use the evidence I have here and then go searching for evidence of your own. But if you're writing about a different topic or if you're writing about the same topic but your position statement is different, make sure you go looking for the evidence that supports your claims.